Have you ever tried to balance an object on your fingertip? Notice how if you're even a little off center, the object will fall. When you're successful, what you've done is place your fingertip directly below the object's center of mass. The center of mass of an object is basically the middle point of the weight of the object, which we can identify by considering how an object's mass is distributed. For simple shapes, the center of mass is the precise center of the object. For these simple shapes, there are equally simple mathematical equations describing how to locate the center of mass. For example, for a sphere, you can find the center of mass by finding the center of the sphere, or its centroid. And the same would apply for a cube, where the center of mass is located in the geometric center of the object. This happens because these objects are symmetric. Our own bodies also have a center of mass, but the complex shapes of our body segments make this more difficult to calculate. After all, most of us don't have heads the shape of perfect spheres. If our body was made up of shapes, they would certainly not be equilateral. To solve for this, we can locate the center of mass experimentally, just like we did when we tried to balance the object on our fingertip. By balancing the body on a plank and shifting the plank back and forth to find the balance point, we can estimate the location of the center of mass. We can also use mathematical equations to calculate the center of mass location by making some assumptions and simplifications of body segment shapes. For instance, by pretending the forearm is a perfect cylinder or the head is a perfect sphere. Whether you find it by experimentation or calculation, in the human body, the exact location of the center of mass depends on where the segments of our body are in space. That means the center of mass moves around as we move. But generally, when in a standing position, the center of mass is found just below the belly button, that is, around the second sacral, or L5 vertebra. Another related concept that you may have heard is the center of gravity. These two terms are usually used interchangeably, and that is because in a uniform gravitational field, like the Earth's surface, the center of mass and center of gravity are at the same position. Knowing the center of gravity can help us understand how a person maintains balance. For example, for a person who is standing still, balancing easily, downward projection of their center of gravity should be inside their base of support, meaning within the area outlined by any body parts we have in contact with the ground, usually one or two feet. Since the center of mass moves around as we move our body or attain different postures, the center of gravity moves as well. The farther your center of gravity is outside your base of support, the less stable you will be. This is a fundamental principle of static balance. We can maintain balance in a dynamic sense as well, though. The center of gravity can move outside the base of support, but in order to avoid falling, we must be able to synchronize our movements. For example, during gait, as we push off our back leg, we temporarily put our center of gravity outside our base of support. Then, we automatically move our backward leg forward in a natural step in order to put our center of gravity back inside our base of support, achieving dynamic balance. In our daily life, the center of mass and center of gravity can help to determine our ability to maintain balance. Whether static or dynamic, 